The economic impact of COVID-19 has certainly been felt on many fronts. One of these is the decline in the income that investors in dividend-paying shares are likely to receive in 2020. A large number of listed companies globally was compelled to suspend their dividends this year to protect their balance sheet while they navigate through the crisis. Even stalwart South African dividend payers, such as banks and insurance companies, are skipping dividend payments under the advice of the regulator. To add to the troubles of income investors, while borrowers are certainly celebrating the 3% reduction in the prime rate so far this year, which was indeed necessary to reduce the economic hardship of consumers, it will come at the expense of the interest rates that savers will earn on their bank and money market deposits. The prices of many of the dividend shares have also come under pressure, which could have a negative long-term impact on an investor's capital base should he or she sell shares at these levels to supplement income. In our view, the most appropriate strategy at this stage would be for investors to try to live as far as possible with the lower dividend income over the next few months and ride out the dividend drought until companies reinstate dividends once the pandemic is a thing of the past. The lower interest rates on savings also increases the relative attractiveness of South African dividend paying shares, especially from their current depressed prices. A low interest rate environment like we're facing now, um, investors may be tempted to run after anything that promises a high yield. But it is crucially important to assess the associated risk and the growth prospects of any income stream. A high yield in itself may be associated with higher risk, which may not necessarily be suitable for a specific investor, or may signal the market's concern over the sustainability of that income. Rather than focusing on yield in isolation, we at Sunland Private Wealth have a total returns focus, where we value capital growth and income equally. Why? Because if we restrict the portfolio to high dividend yielding shares alone, we unnecessarily uh, constrain the universe of investment opportunities, potentially losing the benefits of diversification and losing access to high growth companies, which often pay out lower dividends. For many investors, there is also seldom a tax benefit of receiving div dividends over capital gains. In our dividend income portfolio, we invest in companies with above average dividend yields, but also with the ability to sustainably grow these dividends ahead of inflation over time. While the next year's yield will be impacted by a few companies deferring dividends, uh, the expected dividend income yield on the portfolio is now close to 7% for the year thereafter when the environment has hopefully returned to normal. This remains an attractive yield relative to current money market rates of around 4% and has the benefit of both prospective capital growth and a more favorable tax treatment, uh, especially for higher marginal tax rate investors.